today. We shall be looking at um, um, Mechnix Paper 4, Variant 2 of this year, um, Cambridge Examination, May June 2023. Now, this is the first question. The first question is a particle of mass. The mass of the particle is 1.6 kg. That's the mass of the particle. It's dropped from a height. They use the word dropped. So where it's coming from? The initial velocity is zero. Where it's coming from? Because it's dropped. It's dropped from a height of 9 meter above the ground. So something like this. This is the this is the top of the building. Or this is the ground. The distance between where it's coming from and the ground is nine meter. The particle is placed here. So it's coming from let me call the top A. Let me call the ground B. It's coming from A to B. According to you know, when you drop a particle, there's and uh, there's going to be interchange gene of um, energies, kinetic and potential. But there's a clause in this question. The question wants us to factor resist resistive force because they ask us to find the work done against resistance. On the normal day, without resistance, you're going to obey the principle of conservation of energy, which means that energy at A should be equal to energy at B. But in this case, where there is resist, resistive force, that's the force slowing down the particle. In this case, um, the energy at A, which is kinetic plus potential, will be equal to energy at B, which is kinetic plus potential. But the difference is that I'm going to add work done against external forces. Why? Because there's a resistive force. So the work done will be added to the final point where it's going. So what's the kinetic at A? Since the ball or the particle is dropped, so kinetic energy at A is zero. Potential energy at A, that's mgh. What's the mass? That's mgh. All at A. Kinetic energy at B, there will be kinetic energy at B because the question said we should find the speed of the particles at the instant of hitting the gun. Um, find the speed of the particle at the instant before hitting the gun is 12 meter per second. Okay. The speed, the speed of the particle as instant before hitting the ground is 12 meters per second. Okay, so there will be kinetic energy at B at mv square. At B, the potential energy at B will be zero because it's, as it's falling from A to B, potential energy is decreasing to eventually come to zero by hitting the ground plus work done against external forces. Now we have to find the work done against external forces. From here, we have zero. What's the mass? 1.6. Um, what's our g? Our g is um, 10. Acceleration due to gravity for mechanics is always 10. What's the height? The height is 9. Equal to half m. Our mass is 1.6. The speed before hitting the ground, I'll take it as a ground, is 12 meter per second square plus zero potential energy at B plus work done against external forces. That was done against a city force. So from here, we have 10 times 1.6, that's 16. So 16 times 9, let me use my calculator.
144 equal 12 squared is 144 144 divided by 272 times 1.6 in this place we have um 115.2 plus work done against external force. Let me confirm it well. 144 divided by 2, 72 times 1.6. Okay. So, hence, work done against external force or velocity force or resistance 144 minus 115.2. Let me subtract it. 144 minus 105.2. We have 28.9. So work done by external force, which is work done by a system, is 28.8 joule. It can be approximated to 29 joule. That's it. Work done by a city forces or a city force. Let's move to the next question. The next question is um, a momentum question. Particle A and B of mass 3.2 and 2.4 kg respectively lie on a smooth horizontal table. Let's say this is a table. They lie there. A is 3.2 kg. 3.2 to B is 2.4 kg. They lie on the smooth horizontal table. A move toward B with the speed of V. A move toward B with speed V and collide with B which is moving toward A so um, moving toward A with the speed of 6 meter per second B is also moving toward A with a speed so initial speed of B is 6 meter per second in initial speed of A is V, V meter per second. In the collision, the two particles come to rest, which means they eventually collide and come to rest. The key is they come to rest. When they, come to, when they collide, they didn't tell us whether they move in separate direction or the same direction. But at the end of the day, after collision, 3.2 kg and 2.4 kg mass, A and B, came to rest. That's the key. They came to rest. Now, find the value of B. Of course, principle of conservation of momentum. Total momentum before collision. So before collision, we have um, A is going toward the positive direction. So that's 3.2 multiplied by V. B is going toward negative direction. You can see the arrow. That will be minus 2.4 multiplied by 6. So after collision, they came to rest. So what? So if they come to rest, which means that the momentum is zero because they came to rest. So from here, we have 3.2 V equal to 2.4 times 6. So V is 2.4 times 6 divided by 3.2 so our v is 4.5 meter per second that's the answer question b find the loss in kinetic energy now let's take, treat it one by one let's find kinetic energy at a of a it will be half mass of a speed of a squared the mass of A, as you know, is 3.2. The speed 
the one we just calculated now is 4.5, you know, square. At the end of the day, we have 32.4 Joule. Kinetic energy of B, that will be half mass of B, speed of B squared. All the mass of B, as you know before, is 2.4. The speed is 6 squared. So use your calc for the 3.2. So total kinetic energy before collision. We are not going to follow direction. We are not going to follow this arrow direction in this case. Because kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. You just add them together. That will be 32.4 plus 43.2. Total kinetic energy before collision will give us 75.6 Joule. Now let's find kinetic energy after collision. Remember that after collision, the body came to rest. So hence, since they came to rest after collision, hence, the kinetic energy will be zero. So you can see from 75.26 to zero, there's a loss in kinetic energy. That's why the question has to define the loss of kinetic energy. So loss of kinetic energy will be the difference. That's 75.6 minus zero. That's 75.6 Joule. That's the loss of kinetic energy of the system. Number three. Coplanar forces of magnitude 30 Newton, 15 Newton, 33 Newton. We have three forces and P Newton, sorry, four forces. They act at a point in the direction shown in the diagram where tan alpha is 4 over 3. The system is in equilibrium. Remember that in equilibrium, all the summation of forces in x axis, summation of forces in y axis, they are all equal to zero. So now, First, they gave us tan alpha to be 4.3. So if tan alpha is 4.3, tan alpha is 4, 4 over 3, alpha will be actan, 4 over 3. Actan 4 over 3 will give us 53.1 degree. That's alpha. Since we have how many forces? Four forces. Let me play like this. The forces, I'm going to resolve them in, I'm going to resolve the forces in x direction and also in y direction. The forces are, I think I have 15 Newton. See it. I have 33 Newton. I also have um, P Newton and 30 Newton. Let me resolve them individually in X and Y direction. Look at the 15 Newton. This is the X direction. This is the Y direction. It look like this. Let me draw it so you can see it. Alpha, y direction, x direction, and this is 15, as you can see. The x direction of 15, that's the horizontal component adjacent to y hypotenuse. That's cos alpha. So x direction of 15, it will be 15 cos alpha. And you know alpha, so 15, that will be 15 cos 53.1. And 15 cos 53.1, um, okay, let me put it there. 15 cos 53.1.
Let's do the y direction at the same time. And that's opposite of hypotenuse. Sine alpha is y over 15. So y is 15 sine alpha. And you know, alpha is 53.1. So y direction is 15 sine 53.1. Okay, let's pick another force. Let me clean this. Let's pick another force. I'm done with resolving 15 Newton. Let's pick 33 Newton now. Now, as you can see, 33 Newton, this is the vertical. And the vertical, you no, know, upper is positive, lower is negative. So the vertical here, you know, is, in, is downward, is in negative direction. This is the horizontal. This is the vertical. So, let me see. So, for 33 Newton, so for, for, the, for 33 Newton, the diagram looks like this. Sorry. The diagram look like this. The vertical is downward. The horizontal is in, is in this direction. And this is 33 Newton. If you check it, this is alpha. This is vertical. This is horizontal. I remember that the vertical is in the negative direction because it's downward. So, so for vertical, sine alpha is negative y over 33. First multiply, negative y equal to 33 sine alpha. So y is negative 33 sine alpha, sine 53.1. So the vertical force for 33 is minus 33 sine 53.1. Let's do the horizontal. The same triangle adjacent over hypotenuse. X over 33 equal to cos alpha. So X is 33 cos alpha. And remember that alpha is 53.1. So for horizontal, for 33 is um, 33 cos 53.1. One. Let me clean it and pick another force. Let's pick P Newton. That's the next force. P Newton is the next force. Okay, P. Look at P here, yeah? somewhere here. Yeah? So, um, P is somewhere here. Yeah? I'm going to draw the diagram. It looks like this. The vertical is also downward. The horizontal two is sorry for P. The horizontal is, is in this direction toward the left hand side. That's negative x axis. 
the vertical tree is negative y. So this is um, so let me sketch it for P. For P. Um, okay. But for P, um, it's like this. Okay. It's downward. This is P here, yeah, if you see it. It's like this. Yeah. The X is negative. The Y is negative. And so, um, but the difference is that the angle is not alpha. Here is theta. And this is P. This is the X axis, which is negative direction. This is the Y. This is negative also. So for P, I'm going to resolve it in this form. Let me do the, the vertical. Resolving vertically, sine theta negative y over hypotenuse p. So negative y is p sine theta. So the negative direction, so the y of p is minus p sine theta. Minus p sine theta. So here is minus p sine theta. Y, the x x direction of that the x direction of p let's resolve that that will be adjacent over hypotenuse cos theta so minus x is p cos theta so x x is also minus p cos theta so resolving x horizontally is also minus p cos theta. Let me clean this. And let's pick the last force. The last force is um, 30 newton. 30 newton. We're going to do the same thing. What we're doing to all of them, resolving them horizontally and vertically. So. Okay, let me pick 30 Newton. Okay, 30 Newton force is like this. So, um, so we're going to have um, it's like this. Let me make it bigger. Can even resolve it directly here yeah, without drawing it. So this is the y axis. This is what x axis for so 30 newton. So to when you resolve it vertical, you know it's upward. The vertical here is upward now. It's not downward. So sine 30 is equal to y over 30. Sorry, yeah, y what sine theta? Sorry, we don't have angle. So y is 30 sine theta. So the vertical component of 30 is 30 sine theta. Why the horizontal component adjacent over hypotenuse? Adjacent over hypotenuse is on the left hand side. See it? It's on, it falls on the other side. That's negative automatically. Equal to cos theta. At the end of the day, x will be minus 30 cos theta so horizontal component for 30 is minus 30 cos theta so that's the first step so when you see a question like this copana forces at the particular angle resolve them into horizontal and vertical components separately horizontal and vertical components so since the question said that okay i'm done with this the question said they are in equilibrium. The system is in equilibrium. You can see it means summation of vertical forces must be equal to zero. Summation of horizontal forces too must be equal to zero. So let's add all the horizontal forces, all the vertical forces first. All the vertical forces we have 15 
sine 53.1 minus 33 sine, according to the sign in front of them, 53.1 minus P sine theta plus 30 sine theta equal to zero. Now, now from here, what is 15 sine 53.1? Sine 53.1 times 15. We have um, 11.995. Eleven point nine nine five minus thirty three sine fifty three point one times fifty three point one times thirty three. We have twenty six point three nine. Twenty six point three nine. You know, minus p sine theta and this take them to the other side so it become p sine theta minus 30 sine theta so in the end of the day 11.995 minus 26.39 that gave us minus 14.4 so equal sine theta is common here or you have a p minus 30. so let me make sine theta the subject of formula so when you make sine theta the subject of formula that gives um that gives minus um Okay, this is P sine. So when I make sine theta from that will, that will be minus 14.4 over P minus 30. So from here, from here, sine theta is still the same thing as minus 14.4. Minus 30 plus p. So sine theta is minus 14.4. You can factorize minus down here. So we have 30 minus p such that minus cancel minus. So sine theta. So sine theta is 14.4 over 30 minus p. I will call this equation 1. I got equation one by resolving vertically by using the vertical component equal to zero. You know, since then equilibrium, since then equilibrium, summation of horizontal forces two will be zero. So the result, the horizontal forces are. 15 cos 53.1 plus 33 cos 53.1 minus P cos theta minus 30 cos theta equal to zero. This place is 30, 30 cos theta. At the end of the day, um, 15 cos, at the end of the day, this plus this um, will give us, this one will give us 9, while the other one will give us 19.81. Um, Take this to the other side of equal sign, that give P cos theta plus 30 cos theta. Add this together. Going to have 28.81. So make factorize it of cos theta is what? P plus 
30. So make cos theta the subject of formula. So we have 28.81 over P plus 30 equation 2. Now the question asks us to show that 14.4, this is what they ask us to show. So when you see, what I notice there is that we've gotten this and this, they add it and it's, they said it's equal to 1. It's similar to sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equal to 1. That's the whole idea. So, what I'll do is that square, both square equation 1, square equation 1, square equation 1, and equation square equation one and equation two then add them add them up so equation one i'm squaring equation one and two that sign squared theta plus cos squared theta so that will be 14.4 over 30 minus p all square this is this plus equation 2 28.81 over p plus 30 all square i square them this is this and add them together there's a trigonometric identity that say that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is 1 so end 14.4 over 30 minus p all square plus 28.81 which is 28.8 over p plus 30 all square to equal to 1. That's what it asks us to prove. Next question. Verify that p equal to 6 satisfy this equation okay we have to put substitute p equal to 6 in the previous pool let's see if it's going to give us um, um, 1 that's what they are trying to say so just put 14.4 over 30 minus 6 plus 28.8 over 30 plus 6. Let's see whether it will give us 1. So this we give us this one. We give us user count 9 over 25. This we give us 16 over 25. 9 plus 16 is 25. The LCM is 25. 25 over 25 is 1. Yes. We verify that it gives us one, so we are correct. Oh, oh, and find the value of theta. Sorry, and find the value of theta. Okay. To find the value of theta, use either equation one or equation two. Let me use equation one. From equation one, equation one is um um. Let me see. Sine theta equal to 14.4 over 30 minus p. Sine theta 14.4 over 30 minus p. And p is 6. 30 minus 6 is what? 24. So Let me check it properly. Yeah, 14.4 30 minus p. So 14.4 divided by 24. On calculator, it, it gives us g over 5. So theta will be sine inverse of 3 over 5. So sine inverse of 3 over 5 gives 36.5. 87 so theta is approximately 
nine degree. Does it? Well, two marks. The next question, number four. Number four, the next question. An athlete of mass 84 kg is running along a straight road. An athlete of mass 24 kg is running along a straight road. Um, and it runs at a constant speed. Okay, this is the road. The athlete is running. Look at the athlete is running. So, along a straight road, with the speed of six three meter per second, the speed of the athlete is three meter per second. There's something there again. The constant power is 60 watt. Whenever you are giving speed and power, this is the relationship they want you to use. Power is FV. So the force driving the athletic is power over V. What's power? 60. What velocity? 3. That gives us 20 Newton. So the force driving the atlas is 20 Newton. And the question said, hmm, Find the resistive force, okay? Which means the resistive force slowing down the athlete. It's always resistive force is always opposite to the driving force. So this is the skeletal diagram. But there's a key to the question. It's run at the constant speed. At the constant at constant speed, acceleration is equal to zero. So from here now, from the diagram, we have two forces acting on the athlete. The driving force 20 newton and the resultant and the resistive force you know when you have two or more forces acting on the body you have to find the resultant force resultant force is always the driving force 20 and the resistive force ah from newton's law of motion newton's second law of motion resultant force is mass times acceleration equal to 20 minus r and mass is 84 Acceleration is zero equal to 20 minus r. By the end of the day, 20 minus r is equal to zero. So r, velocity force, is also 20 newton. That's it. The next question. The athlete then run up 150 meter section. The athlete then run up 150 meter section. Up, which is inclined at 0 0.8 degree. Okay, the guy went up at inclined plane, inclined at 0 0.8 degree. Here is 0 0.8 degree. Don't forget that the total section on this place, according to the question is 150 meter so let me call this point x the lower bottom the lower point the upper let me call it y so the speed of athlete at the start the speed here the speed at x according to the question the speed at x is three meter per second and now produces a constant driving force of 24 Newton. In the question, we have a driving force of 24 Newton. In this section, the velocity force, the total velocity force which acts on the athlete along this section, this section alone of the road is 13 Newton. Of course, is going to reduce so use the energy method to find the speed of athlete at the end of the section so the answer to find is speed at y using energy method now the energy method the access to use change in work done on the athlete along the section change in work done must equal to change in mechanical energy Change the work done is work done by driving force 
minus work done by gravitative force. Change in mechanical energy. It will be mechanical energy at y, where it's going, minus mechanical energy at x, where it's coming from. That's the whole idea. Now, from here now, let me start with mechanical energy. What's mechanical energy at y? That's at the top surface here. Mechanical energy is a combination of potential energy and kinetic energy. Plus kinetic energy plus potential energy at y. And so mechanical energy. So mechanical energy at this point. Let me check the space available. Yeah. We need to manage our space. So mechanical energy at y will be um, half. The mechanical energy at y will be half. What the mass of this guy? Let's see. So the mass is still 84. The mass is 84. I don't know the speed at y plus potential energy mass is 84 g is 10 let's find the height so to get the height you are going to use this triangle i don't know the height so that will be sine 0.8 opposite over hypotenuse so my height is 150 sine 0.8 so at the end of the day the height is 2.1 so therefore, here will be my height is 2.1. So mechanical energy at y will be 42 vy square plus this 2.1. Let me clean it so you can see it properly. This 2.1 840 multiplied by 2.1. So, yeah, I have 1764. So, I need to make this thing clear. Seventeen six four. That's mechanical energy at Y. Let's look for mechanical energy at x too. Mechanical energy at x is also kinetic energy at x plus potential energy at x. Now, so mechanical energy at x, okay. So mechanical energy at x will be. Um, half multiplied by 84 speed at x is 3 3 square mass at mass is 84 g is 10 at x there's no height so potential energy automatically will be zero so mechanical energy at x in this diagram will give us um let's see 42 times 9 378 joule 378 Joule equation 2. So, using the, using the relationship, this relationship, equation asterisk, what is work done by driving force? Work done is first time distance. Driving force is 24. You know, it's going to, we are going to cover this 150 section. The work done by driving force will be driving force times 150. Work done by a city force. What's our city force? 13. 13 times 150. Equal to change in mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is 42 Vy square. 42 Vy square plus 1764 plus 378. So from there, so we have um, 
the work done. Sorry, this is negative. If you check the equation, this is negative. Mechanical energy at x. All the mechanical energy at x is 378. So 24 times 150 gives us 3600. 13 times 150, 1950. Equal to 42 vy square. 1764 minus 378. We have 1386. When you subtract this one, we have 1650. So equal to 42 vy square plus 1386. Collect the lights then. 1650 minus 1386 equal to 42 vy square. So this gives us um, 264 equal to 42 vy square. So hence vy square equal to 264 over 42. So which give 6.2857. So Vy will be square root of 6.2857. So the speed at Y, that the speed at the end of the road, give us 2.51 meter per second. That's it. I believe you understand them. Next question. Question 5. Now, for question five, um, we have this diagram. Okay, number five question. A particle. Okay, first, before going to this question properly, I'd like to do something. Let me complete this diagram. If you check the force. The force on the on the on the particle p newton is tilted. Is tilted. It's not properly placed. It's tilted. So you have to resolve this force p and check the direction of p. Is going inward. You have to resolve it vertically. Is going in what the vertical two will go downward while the horizontal we go in this direction which is very careful so if we resolve it vertically this is 35 the angle here two will be 35 so this point will be p sine 35 why the horizontal will be p Cos 35. Okay. You know, don't forget your normal reaction. Don't forget it, your normal reaction. But at the same time, this is your weight, it's the weight mg. So here will be. Uh, this side mg cos 35 by this side but let me draw it neat so let me make it neat okay so this side this is your weight down Well, so the weight is mg downward. Let me resolve this. When you resolve this, align with a normal reaction. So we have at that point, we have mg cos 35 
down the incline plane parallel to it like this that will be mg sine 35 that's the first thing you need to resolve it first after that let's read the question a particle of mass 0.6 kg is placed on a rough plane oh since it's rough if you check the horizontal direction here this peak cost 35 is going inward it's going to upward so it's rough so there will be a frictional force on the other side that will oppose it in the opposite direction because it's rough there will be a frictional force here okay the particle is kept in equilibrium don't forget that that of time equilibrium by horizontal force of magnitude p newton acting vertical plane containing a line of greater slope as you can see the correction of friction between the particle and the plane the equation of friction between the particle and the plane is 0 0.4 and so find the least possible value of p okay we just say the least possible value of p that is the minimum value of p to move the body is in equilibrium for now the minimum value of p to move the body okay let's find the value of p remember that they are in equilibrium which means that all the vertical forces must equal to zero don't forget horizontal forces must equal to zero now all upward forces will equal to downward forces now what are the upward forces p sine 35 is upward normal reaction is upward so the downward forces is mg cos 35 equation one using vertical forces at the same time also um summation of horizontal forces too will equal to zero or forces to the right will equal to forces to the left now if you check frictional force is going to the left if you check mg sine 35 it's also going to the left so they are going to the same direction so since frictional force and mg sine 35 are going to the same direction add them together equal to the only one going to the right is p cos 35 you know it's going upward equal to p cos 35 that's equation two so let's solve these two simultaneously i think if you solve them simultaneously you can get the value of p okay now from equation two i want to get the value of p right okay um from equation one equation one I have I can make normal reaction the subject of formula so it's going to give me mg cos 35 minus p sine 35 and remember that my mg my mass is 0 0.6 0 0.6 times 10 that's 6 so this give me 6 cos 35 minus p sine 35 I'll call this equation three. From equation two, um, you know, I have friction. Let me make frictional force the cell of my frictional force will be P cos 35 minus mg, which is six, six sine 35. I remember that frictional force it's correction of friction times normal reaction that's frictional force correction of friction times normal reaction so um here we have correction of friction times normal reaction equation three gives us normal reaction normal reaction is what six cos 35 minus p sine 35 so equal to P cos 35 minus 6 sine 35. 
And remember that correction of friction is um, 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 times 6 cos 35 minus 0 0.4 times P sine 35 equal to P cos 35 minus 6 sine 35. So let's do our math. Mm, this time this will give us 1.966. 0 0.4 times P sine 35 will give us 0 0.2294P equal to this P cos 35 will give me 0.8192P. Why 6 times? 6 sine 35 is 3.441. Collect the like stem, 1.966, yeah, plus 3.441, so equal to 0.8192p, plus 0.2294p. When you add this together, we will have 5.407, add this one together. 1.048p. So make p the subject of formula. So p is 5.407 divided by 1.048. At the end of the day, p is 5.156. Approximately, my p is 5.2 newton. This is p. To make the body in equilibrium but the question asks us to find the least value of p so minimum value of p be greater than 5.2 newton so minimum value so to move the body together it be greater than 5.2 the minimum value because 5.2 you only make the body in equilibrium so the minimum value of P, according to the question, the least value of P should be greater than 5.2 newton. Okay. Next question, number six. Yeah. Now, this question, so a particle starts from rest. So it starts at rest. And move in a straight line from point O at time t seconds after leaving O. Okay, we start at rest from point O. So uh, it starts at rest and move in a straight line from point O. Okay, at time t at time t seconds after leaving O, velocity of p v meter per second is given us after leaving O. So the velocity is given as um, v equal vt plus ct raised to power 3 over 2. Obviously, it's not uniform. So v and c are constant. When the velocity, when the velocity, we have velocity and time like this. So when the velocity is eight, the time is four. And when the velocity is thirteen point five, the time is nine. We have to show that b is this and c is this, so they make the work easier. Substitute the value of v and t inside the equation given. When v is um, 8, um, t is 4, so 4 t. Um, t is 4, that's 4 b. t is 4, here with 4 is about 3 over 2. So we, and 4 is about 3 over 2 will give us 2, 2, 8. Yeah, will give us 8. So 8 is 4B 
plus 8c. That should be it. So divide 2 by 4. So we have b plus 2c equal to 2. I call it equation 1. And also, when b is 13.5, t is 9. Repeat the substitution again. Put 13.5 as b, and at that moment, t is 9. Let's do that. 13.5, t is 9. So we have 9b plus c, 9 raised to the power 3 over 2. If we make it up a calculator, I think that will give us 3 squared, 27. We have 9b plus 27c equal to 13.5. So this should be equation 2. So from equation 1, you know we have b is 2 minus 2c. Substitute b in equation 2. So equation 2 now becomes um, 9b, b is 2 minus 2c plus 27c equal to 13.5. So at the end of the day, we have 18 minus 18c plus 27c equal to 13.5. So minus 18c plus 27c, that's 9c. So 13.5 minus 18. At the end of the day, we have minus 0.5. That's a C. That was the access to proof. Since B is 2 minus 2C. So B will be 2 minus minus uh, C is 4.5, right? At the end of the day, minus sign minus plus. B is 3. Perfect. This is what it asks us to prove. Now let's move to B question. Find the acceleration of P when T is 1. You know, it's, it's not uniform. So you can't use your normal Suvat equation. So let's use calculus. Acceleration, you know, since we have a uh, B and C. So V will be, you know, V is um, for the model, um, BT plus CT raised to the power 3 over 2. So our B is 3, so it become 3. C is minus 0.5 minus half. So you have to find the acceleration when t is 1. You know, acceleration is the v, the t. When you differentiate velocity, you get the acceleration. When you differentiate 3t, we have t. This one, we have half times 3 over 2t, 3 over 2 minus 1. At the end of the day, acceleration is 3 minus 3 over 4t raised to the power half. So when t is equal to 1, Acceleration is 3 minus 3 over 4, 1 raised to the power half. That will give us 3 minus 3 over 4. 3 minus 3 over 4, that will be 3 minus 0 0.75. At t equal to 1, acceleration is 2.25 meter per second square. Wait. Now, C question. Find the positive value of t. Find the positive value of t when p is instantaneous, is at instantaneous rest. At instantaneous rest, um, it means instantaneous rest means that the velocity is zero. Instantaneous rest. The velocity is zero. So, and velocity is 3t minus half t raised to the power 3 over 2. At in instantaneous rest, this model becomes 0. Um, so, 3t 
will be half t raised to the power 3 over 2. That will give us 6t equal to t raised to the power 3 over 2. So from here, fix will be t raised to the power 3 over 2 divided by t raised to the power 1. So that will give us t 3 over 2 minus 1. So, okay, I see our space. So then we have six um half. Ah. So multiply um square both sides. Six square. So this cancel this. So t is thirty six second. Now, and also find the distance of p from o. Distance of p from o at this distance distance okay now since uh, since v is 3t minus half t half t raised to the power 3 over 2 you know velocity is um ds dt velocity is ds dt which is equal to 3t minus half. Velocity is the same thing as ds dt. So at the end of the day, the s is 3t minus half t the t. Since I'm looking for s, integrate both sides. So I integrate the s, integrate 3t minus half t with respect to the t you know they said at this instant at that instant that's when um time is 36 you know it's from 0 to 36 so when you integrate s ds we have s when you integrate ds we have s integration of 3t that's 3t squared over 2 Minus integration of this that's half three over two plus one over three over two plus one. Don't forget the limit thirty six and zero. So, so from here we have s equal um three over two t square minus um half times um, half times this 5 2 over 5 t raised to the power 5 over 2 you know? I already simplified 2 cancel 2 so s is 3 over 2 20 is 36 um, at this instant okay um, this is at this instant, hold on. We are not using the limit yet. After integrating, let's put our between constant. After integrating, let's put our between constant. Okay, easy way. So, so at the end of the day. You know, we have um, yeah, man. At the end of the day, we have okay. Let's see the space. Okay, we don't have much space. Let's manage it. We have s equal three over two t square. Minus one over five t is by five over two plus a bit we can stand. You know, when t is zero, s is zero, so our c2 will be zero. So at the end of the day, we have the model for distance with three over two t square minus one over five t is by five over two plus zero. Now at this instant, you know, we got time to be 36 20 is 36 let's now find a distance 
So 3 over 2, 36 square. 3 over 2, 36 square. Minus 1 over 5, 36 raised to the power 5 over 2. So, so our S will be 36 times 36 divided by 2 times 3, 1944 minus um, 6 square. Six squared, so six is the power five. So divided by five. So we have one five 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 point two. So at the end of the day, nineteen four four minus one five 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 point two. So the distance at this instant is 388.8 meter, which can be approximated to 389 meter. Okay, now let me go back how I make it up. I got my C. You know, when you check from the beginning, they said the particle starts at rest and move in a straight line from a point O. You know, at rest, the time. At rest, the time will be zero. It doesn't cover any distance at rest. So when you put S zero, T zero, so C will be zero automatically. So then we have this. Then we have this. I remember the questioner asked us to find the distance of P from O at this instant. At this instant, what they mean is by the at this time t that we calculated, which is 36. After getting my vitri constant and getting the model, so I can now get my 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 distance as 38. My distance as 389. Okay. The last question D of this part. Find the speed of p at the instant it returns to zero. Oh. At the instant it will turn to zero. Oh, good question. This displacement will be zero. That's the meaning. By the time it go back to zero, the displacement will be zero. So um what's our displacement? Our S, you know, we got it earlier. Three over two. That's it. Three over two T square minus Three over two t square minus one over five t is to power five over two. That's a displacement. So find the speed at the instant displacement. Uh, uh, return to zero. Displacement is zero. So when x is zero. So we have 3 over 2t square equal 1 over 5t5 five over 2. So from here, first multiply. So we have 2t raised to the power 5 over 2 equal 15t square. So which can be written as 15 over 2t raised to the power 5 over 2 all over t square. So, so from here we have 15 over 2 equal t5 over 2 minus 2. 15 over 2 equal, I think, yeah, t up. So square both sides. And you square both sides. And you square both sides. We have. 2, 2, 5 over 4 at t. This is the time at the instant it returns to 0. But you have to find the velocity at this instant. Remember the velocity is 3t 
minus half t raised to the power of 5. Let me check it. Is it 5 over 2 or 3 over 2? Okay, 3 over 2. Raised to the power 3 over 2. And the time is 225 over 225 over 4 minus half into bracket 225 over 4 raised to the power 3 over 2. The velocity of this instant that will be 225 times 3 divided by 4. We have 168.75. Um, 15 over 2, 2, okay. 15 over 2. So, so 15 times 15 times 15. Divided by 2 cube 8. We have this times 12.5. So that's 210.93. So B is 168.75 minus 210. Point nine three. Um, six. Okay. We have minus forty two point eighteen meter per second. That's the velocity at the instant if you turn back um, to zero. So see you in the next part for the last question. Take care.